Hey, this is Just A Dude Practicing, and this is the first of my monthly progress reports. So in these progress reports, I'm just gonna go over what I'm working on, how the last month has been, my plans, goals, and you know, hopes for the next month. Um, maybe I'll get into things that I'm struggling with or you know, kind of breakthroughs I've had. And really, it's just a nice way for me to keep track of my progress um, you know, and the, the things I'm thinking. But you know, feel free to watch if you want. So this one will probably be a, a bit longer than future progress reports just because I have a few things to cover. Seeing as how this is the first time I'm speaking on the channel, except for you know, muttering to myself uh, while I practice. So the first is why I film my practice, because right? it's kind of a strange thing to do. Uh, normally you just wanna you know, show the result of what you've been working on. So a long time ago, I had this idea that it'd be really cool if I could film the entire process of something, right? Like, especially like a long-term, long-term project and just have the whole thing just on record, right? And I can go back and I could kind of see the things I was working on. I could see what I was doing day to day, um, you know, compare my, my older self to my, my current self and use that as, as motivation to keep going. Um, and it just made sense to put it on YouTube because YouTube is just a really nice way to organize tons and tons of videos sequentially. And I had the idea, started doing it, and almost immediately I realized, oh, you know what? There's a second, second benefit here too. I get to show what practice looks like. Right? The only thing we ever see is the you know, result of some, someone's hard work. And we very rarely get a glimpse into what that actually looks like day to day. And it can kind of be demotivating. Um, you know, if you see someone on a short or whatever, that's just freaking ripping through something. It's like, well, I, I can't do that, right? There's such a divide between <clears throat> where I am and where this person is. And without seeing all of the labor, right? All of the, all of the work that went into it, it can be a downer, at least for me. Maybe it's a personality, <clears throat> maybe it's a personality thing. But yeah, so two main reasons, like I said, I thought it'd be cool to have a record. And I, I, I think you know, I've really come to like the idea of showing the process of something uh, and all its, you know, all the nitty gritty. Um, I'm obviously not a great guitarist. So, you know, maybe if I keep it up, then this channel will really be, you know, valuable. But uh, for now, I don't know. I just like showing it. This is what it looks like. You know, you sit here, you play the same four licks for an hour, then you move on to another set. Um, so what I upload here is pretty much the only time I touch my guitar. So, you know, if I do get awesome, this will be a complete record. Um, I didn't expect views or subscribers at all. I thought I'd be sitting at zero for, you know, for the next few years. But surprisingly, a bunch of people are watching, which is kind of odd. You know, my hours, my videos are an hour and a half, two hours long of me just sitting here on the couch playing the same thing over and over at slightly faster tempos, but it's awesome. I love the comments, by the way. And, uh, you know, if you have anything you're curious about, you want to ask, you know, hit me up. Um, kind of same thing for the progress reports, right? Why am I filming these progress reports? I kind of debated whether or not I should. Um, the first week I started the channel, I was like, oh, maybe I should, you know, talk to the camera. I thought, well, I don't really want to get away from the point. The point is, a dude just practicing, like, that's it. Let's not add any bells and whistles. But I do like the idea of, again, being able to look back, you know, a couple years from now and, and, and hear myself talk about the struggles I'm, I'm facing. Um, maybe it'll be motivating to see that I've overcome them, or hopefully. So it's kind of like a journal entry. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> All right. My music background, I've had a few people ask, uh, you know, am I, someone said, I think this is the first couple of weeks of the channel. Hey, it looks like you've been playing guitar for over a year. Well, I would hope so. Uh, I've been playing for a really long time, like really long time. Uh, but I'll say I've been playing with guitar, not necessarily playing guitar. I never really took it seriously. Um, part of the problem is that I didn't really know how to take music seriously. I didn't really know what that looked like. I would, almost the entire time I've been playing, um, I would pick up the guitar sporadically. I would see something I liked, you know, wanted to give it a shot. I would try it and almost always give up way too soon. I didn't realize how long it takes to really, really get things under your fingers. Um, 
the only thing I got down, in my opinion, is gypsy picking, right? So if you've seen me practice, if it sounds different, right, than a normal guitar, say, it's not necessarily that, it's not just because it's a gypsy jazz guitar, it's also the, the picking technique. It's called gypsy picking. Whenever you change strings, it's a downstroke, you use a thing called rest, uh, rest stroke picking, so it's like a little heavy, and it really pops. Anyway, that's about it. Um, I played rhythm in a gypsy jazz band. I thought it was, must have been six years ago. Uh, I knew the chords of the song, usually. Um, I messed up a lot. I don't even know I was, if I was playing rhythm correctly. So that was kind of the extent of my musical career. In between that, like, in the last six years, um, I actually quit guitar for about a year and a half. I saw this guy, this gypsy jazz guitarist, uh, live and he was so good. I did that thing that people joke about, you know, oh, this guy makes me want to quit guitar. I actually put the guitar in its case for a year and a half and uh, touched it. I, I think I started again about a year and a half ago. I started kind of playing around with it. Um, let's see. This is rambling. I apologize. This channel is not going to have any editing, right? <laughs> that's, how, that's how I want to keep it. So... That's kind of my background. I've been playing around with the guitar for a long time. Was in that was was in that band as the rhythm guitarist. Never knew how to solo. Uh, would play around and stuff, but you know, never really gave things uh, their proper due. Never really focused with the intensity that they required. So here's where I'm at musically right now. All right, here we'll get into the progress report bit. Um, here's a realistic assessment of where I'm at musically. Okay, I, I wrote some notes just so I wouldn't ramble too much. I'm not good. Okay, I know this. Uh, I can move around the fretboard adequately enough to learn, but uh, I cannot solo to save my life. Um, I have a handful of half-remembered licks that I know that I can play slowly. Um, I don't have the vocabulary to play over changes. I don't have much of an understanding of what to play where. Uh, and I certainly don't have the speed required to play gypsy jazz or, or any form of jazz, really. So there's that. Uh, since I was in that band, I pretty much forgot how to comp, and I don't even know if, I don't even know if I was comping correctly at that point either. Um, it's kind of to the point where I ask myself, like, what have I been doing with guitar this entire time? All right, up until, I guess, a few months ago when I when I started practicing kind of consistently. Um, so that's where I'm at, and here's where I'm trying to go. All right, my main goal right now is I want to join a gypsy jazz band. But I don't want to just play rhythm. I did that before, kind of, right? Uh, but if I'm going to join, I want a solo. So there are a ton of resources for licks and for solos, but I've never, I've never been able to put in the work necessary to actually incorporate them into my playing. So the main goal is to join a band. Uh, but to do that, I have to learn how to solo. So that gets to, that brings us to what I'm currently working on. So if you look at the last probably month, um, I've been working on mainly this guy, Christian Van Hamert's Gypsy Jazz stuff. He has a thing called the Van Hamert system. And basically what it is, is a way to start soloing. So the, uh, the he has a few books. I think he has four right now. Um, the second one is kind of the meat of the system and it works like this. So first chapter, is four major licks. The second chapter is minor, the third chapter I think is dominant, and then you have some like two five ones and all that. But so the, the first chapter is major licks, or like I said, four of them. And the goal is to play those four licks as a set in all 12 keys over this backing track that he has. Actually, you can hear it. Uh, I think I started, excuse me, I think I started listening to the backing track yesterday and you can hear it um, on the video today too. And you're supposed to play it at speed without making too many mistakes. And it turns out that's really hard. So, but by doing that, right, if you can get to that point, you'll have drilled it enough that those licks should be available um, in all keys. And so you kind of know all the different positions too, the root, the third, uh, the fifth. So, you know, you kind of always know where you are. You always have something to play when, you know, a major chord comes up. And then you do move on to the minor. I started working on that a little while ago. Um, 
kind of do the same thing. You play all the licks in the second chapter, all the minor licks in the second chapter as a set in all 12 keys to this backing track without making too many mistakes. So I love it. This isn't an ad, by the way. Um, I love it. I mean, it's, it's unbelievably repetitive. Um, I had someone comment the other day saying, why don't you play some actual music, <laughs> right? Fair enough, but for me, I just want to be better. And kind of sporadically playing music for fun didn't really get me where I want to be. So now I'm taking, you know, probably the, the, the better approach, which is, which is drilling, putting the time, putting up the, the, the uh, BPM one or two at a time, uh, trying to get faster. So yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Um, I think it's gonna be a, a while before I'm finished with the second book. Um, the other thing I'm doing is the first probably 30, 35 minutes of each practice session is I'm working on technique. This is another Christian Van Hammer thing. I'm kind of in his world right now um, with his books and he's got a discord so you can talk to people and all that. But he's got, he came up with this challenge, I think a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, ELO challenge, ELO. I don't know if you say ELO or, or ELO. And it's 10 licks. Um, they're really, really fast. And I use a few of those licks to warm up and kind of work on my technique at the beginning of each practice session. Um, they're like really fast. So the seventh lick is, again, if you, if you look at any of my videos over the last few days, uh, it's the one that I play in the beginning. It's this A7, A7 lick. It's 16th notes at 170 BPM. I'm nowhere close. I can, I, the, I, the best I've done is 137. And even then, I don't know if I was playing it correctly because it is really, really fast. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Like I said, I start off a technique with that ELO challenge. Um, the bulk of the practice for the moment it, uh, would be chapters one and two of Christian Hammer's second book. It's just a lot of playing the same thing over and over, over and over um, in different keys trying not to mess up, trying to get it in your fingers and always, you know, always while knowing where you are. Um, so next thing in the progress report, where I want to be in a month, right? The next time I do this, uh, it should be March 1st. So I just, I hope I'm keeping consistent. Um, I hope I'm still practicing two hours a day. Uh, you'll see it. If I don't, please say something. Now, I do want to say something about the two hours. Like, why do I play two hours a day? Um, I was doing between 45 minutes and an hour and a half. And then last week, my wife told me about this guy, uh, this, this, I think he's like a radio announcer or something. He has a full-time job. And about a year and a half, two years ago, he really got into piano. And he became slightly obsessed with it. So now the only thing he does is he goes to work he goes to the gym and then he manages to squeeze in four hours every single day, a minimum of four hours every day on piano. And then on his days off, I guess he puts in eight hours. And I heard that and thought, well, I have a lot more free time than this guy. So I can probably, you know, I could do at least two hours. I'm kind of burnt out at the end of two hours. I don't really have the stamina for it um, to, to increase, but maybe, maybe I will eventually. But yeah, I, I heard that and I know, I know that the more you practice, the better you're going to get up to a point, right? Most great musicians have these periods in their life where they're playing eight to 12 hours a day. Um, so if I have, if I want any chance of, you know, soloing in, in a band or, or, you know, whatever it is I want to do, I just need to put in more time and I need to be consistent. So where I want to be in a month, hopefully I'm still consistent. I want to keep focused. Um, I've fallen into the trap before of chasing after shiny things that in the you know gypsy jazz guitar world that I think are going to help me more than the thing I'm currently working on. So I'd like to avoid that trap. Uh, what else? Um, yeah. Next thing in the progress report, how the last month has gone. It's been the most consistent month of my guitar life by far. Uh, I think, I think I pretty much practiced every day this month. I may have missed one day or here or there where I just I couldn't help it. I, I wasn't at home um, at all. Um, let's see. I wish I could edit this out, but like I said, no, no editing on this channel. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Okay. How the last month has gone. It's strange. The guitar strings actually feel softer than they did a month ago. Like, sometimes when I pick up guitar and I go to play, especially from practicing chords for whatever reason, the, the strings will like feel stiff, they'll like bite into my fingers. Um, the, I just won't be able to, I don't know, it seems like I can't press them down hard enough. Like the tension is all off. But in the last, I'd say week or so, I've had this really strange feeling that like they're softer. Like it feels better to, 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 um, to pick. Uh, it feels better to, to fret, you know, things are feeling much better. So I would say, you know, it's going really well. I've learned a lot from the Van Hambert stuff. Um, I really enjoy looking at my channel and seeing all the videos lined up. So that's been kind of motivating. Um, I've had some really nice comments from people saying, hey, a couple of people put it on in the background, which is kind of funny. Uh, but you know, if you want to go ahead. Uh, I've had some other people say that just seeing my videos or you know a little little clip here and there helps them practice, motivates them to practice. So I would say the last month, guitar-wise, has gone really well. Let's see. Um, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Last thing, all this information is in the description, but I'll go over my gear in case you want to know. So the guitar I use is an Eastman DM1. Gypsy Jazz guitar. Um, I did have a D500, but the D500 um, is only a 12 fret body and I needed a 14 fret. So the problem is if you have a 12 fret, you can't get up here when you need to play the higher frets. And everything I was trying to learn, all the licks and all the solos and stuff, um, I, just, I just couldn't reach. So I switched to this, I think last year, and thank goodness, otherwise I would not be able to do Van Hammered stuff because it's all, at some point you're up at, you know, 16, 17. Um, the, oh, Argentine strings, kind of per the rule book of the Gypsy Jazz world, at least as far as I know. So I got Argentine strings. Uh, this is a cork coaster. I believe it's from Ikea. And that is some packing tape. And it just helps take the bite out of the, out of the guitar because I've got my wife here, my cats here, my neighbors right outside this very thin wall. So uh, I did have a towel stuffed in here. I just, I had, I got my guitar set up and I uh, had to take it out. And I just, I don't want to put it back in because it's kind of a pain. You got to loosen everything and shove it in. It, just kind of avoiding it because it's annoying. Uh, what else? Oh, but the towel really works. If you need to kind of quiet down your guitar, that's the way to go. The pick I use, if anyone cares, it's, a Dunlop Gator Grip 2 millimeter. It's the black one. Um, in Gypsy Jazz, you use thicker picks. I, I tried a bunch and settled on this one. And I also, I don't use the pointy bit. I use the round bit. Because with the pointy bit, your pick tends to kind of stick on the strings and, and, and get hung up on them. But with the round bit, you don't have that problem. Um, I'm now so used to the round part that I, I can't, I can't use the pointy part. Like I just, I just, will drop the pick immediately. Let's see what else. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Camera is a GoPro 11. I don't do anything. I film, uh, it automatically sends to GoPro. I hit share to YouTube and I'm done. So there's no editing. It's just straight out of the GoPro. Uh, I don't know, for just to round things up, round things off uh, to be thorough. I've got one LED panel right behind the camera. And that's just because if I don't have it, the video is completely unwatchable. If you see my first few videos on the channel, uh, it's just not a good vibe. Like, <laughs> it just looks terrible. So I turn on this, I turn on the camera, I start practicing, and that is it. Okay, that was a lot longer, uh, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, but if you have any questions, comments, let me know. And uh, yeah, see you in a month. Well, actually, no, see you tomorrow when I sit down to practice. Bye.